with uh, Tom Devine with the Government Accountability Project GAP, talking about the case of Daryl Whitman and the issues that are involved in his case. Daryl Whitman is a whistleblower. He was with the Whistleblower Protection Program, uh, OSHA, the Department of Labor. Uh, he's been fighting for many years uh, to get an investigation about what happened to his uh, case, what he was bullied, he was retaliated against, and he's been fighting to get an accounting, a hearing of what happened. Why has it taken so long for Daryl Whitman to get justice as a whistleblower and a federal government employee who's supposed to examine workers who are fired and retaliated for whistleblowing about health and safety? I think that it's taken so long because the legal rights for whistleblowers are funneled through very slow-moving bureaucracies. Uh, and they're bureaucracies that are the center of political pressures from all sides. And it's almost like you have to wage a multi-year campaign for them to take the, the whistleblower's rights seriously. Um, but his case gets right to the heart of that frustration because he was part of the whistleblower protection bureaucracy. And Daryl blew the whistle on a fraudulent whistleblower protection agency uh, operating out of San Francisco, uh, one that was like a Trojan horse. Um, say, you know, come on and give us your cases. And then they would team up with corporate employers to finish the whistleblower off. Um, is that uh, criminal? Uh, the best case scenario is they'd leave the whistleblower twisting in the wind for four or five years. Uh, Darrow would investigate their charges. Uh, he would find out that um, um, their concerns were well taken, the public was being betrayed, uh, and their rights were being violated. And he'd turn that in, and his boss would tell him to do it over. Um, and then after he did it over, do it over again. Uh, and then after he did it over again, they just sit on it uh, and let it get, gather dust uh, until there was a media scandal. Uh, or the Department of Labor, uh, officially there to protect whistleblower rights, and that's where the corporate whistleblower program was that Daryl worked in. They would be teaming up with the corporate lawyers to um, find out ways to um, uh, not only rule against the whistleblowers, but to ruin them, um, to smear them and trash them in the process. Uh, and these would be bureaucrats who weren't even looking at the evidence. Um, uh, his case is so important because it goes right to the heart of legitimacy for the whistleblower laws. You know, are these whistleblower laws genuine rights, or are they traps uh, that are designed to um, convince whistleblowers to expose themselves to the power structure um, before they make it out to the public. And it, it covered the whole gamut of our society, uh, from um, uh, banking at Wells Fargo, it's one of the cases that he worked on and it was covered up, um, the rights of shareholders under the Sarbanes-Oxley law, the integrity of asbestos testing for the whole nation. It's just a miracle. Uh, the safety of nuclear power plants, um, airline safety, uh, you name it. Whistleblowers were exposing betrayals to the public trust. And then, despite public servants like Daryl Whitman, the Department of Labor was sealing the cover-ups and trashing the messenger. Um, his case is one that will determine the integrity of whistleblower laws in the United States. Uh, Tom Perez was head of the Department of Labor when this was happening. Uh, Daryl was fired. He tried to get a hearing, uh, an investigation, and apparently he was obstructed uh, having an investigation. W where was Tom Perez in all this? Uh, Tom Perez was acting like a politician, uh, so he uh, did some window dressing uh, moves saying we're going to investigate his charges, and then the investigations turned out to be investigations of Daryl Whitman instead of the, the abuses of power that betrayed the public. The people who were investigating wouldn't, didn't want to hear it from the whistleblowers, uh, that um, uh, what was being wrong to the public. They were probing them to see if there was some excuse they could use to fire him. And that's what they did. They used the investigation into his charges as the grounds to fire him. And there are other whistleblowers in his department, uh, whistleblower protection program, who were also bullied and fired in Region 9 of OSHA. I mean, it seems like the, the lawyers who were actually working on this were themselves targeted in mass. Um, all of the good faith whistleblower rights attorney investigators in Region 9 were purged. Um, they were either um, fired or um, forced to resign in protest. And they were replaced by investigators without much background um, who would just do what they're told. Uh, and that's a common dynamic in bureaucracies that are acting in bad faith. Now, even if Daryl wins this case, uh, personally, uh, do you see any change in, in the Department of Labor and OSHA? Because it seems to be a systemic problem. Uh, 
of course it matters to win your case. Um, uh, you know, when uh, Darrell wins his case, that gets him the credibility for uh, people to take him more seriously. And um, winning the case isn't enough. It has to be a legal campaign. So winning the case will be the springboard um, for the campaign to bring uh, integrity to the whistleblower rights that are enforced by the Department of Labor. Uh, and uh, I think he's going to do it. Uh, he's one of those unsinkable people, uh, and you just can't keep him down. Now, American Federation of Government Employees represent Daryl and the other whistleblowers, and they, uh, the government now is going after uh, protection for government employees. I mean, they're making it more vulnerable. Um, what do you think the role of the union should be, AFSCME, American Federation of Government Employees, in protecting public workers who want to do their job and are retaliated against? Well, I think they have to make this a higher priority at the national level. Uh, at the local level in San Francisco, the uh, American Federation of Government Employees was always there. They were, Dara was a, a steward in the union. Um, they were his partners. He was on the Labor Council. Uh, they were his partners in defending the integrity of the program. They were defending him at the local level. Um, uh, it hasn't been as high of a priority out of national headquarters, and, and that would be helpful. But um, the AFGE has been an invaluable partner for us at the Government Accountability Project in defending him. They've been the local organizers for AFGE are some of the key witnesses in his case at the Federal Whistleblower Agency now, the U.S. Office of Special Counsel. And public workers, the protection of public workers is not about themselves personally only but also the public. So the public is going to be safe on the air, and safe in the land, and, and safe for the environment. So do people see that, though, when public employees are attacked? Uh, I think the public is more and more appreciating that whistleblowers are making the choice to be public servants instead of bureaucrats. Uh, but it's very dangerous to be a public servant in America. Uh, and that's why we need to keep fighting to enforce these laws. And Dara Wins's case, it'll just be the start. Um, uh, of uh, turning the tide uh, against uh, a corrupt system of rights for the private sector in our country.